Hey everyone, Tony here, JP Wisco, back with another video for you. So today I want to show you some cards that I recently picked up. Uh, but before I do that, I want to kind of briefly address uh, Project 2020, Tops Project 2020, and all the blistering madness uh, attendant there too. Uh, I'm not going to go at, you know what Project 2020 is, so I'm not going to like waste time uh, talking about what it is. Uh, as you probably know, um, the, the hype and the prices on these cards have reached like unbelievable uh, dizzying levels. Um, it's like somebody made a deal with Mephistopheles, and <laughs> I, I don't know. But so, for example, the uh, the Ben Baller Ichiro is like two grand right now, is what it's going for. Ermsey Trout is uh, around a thousand dollars. You know, a lot of these cards are going for multiple hundreds, couple hundred. Um, and so, obviously, it's madness out there, and. You know, I'm not going to, in this discussion, I'm not going to get into, like, the whys of why this is happening. I think it's pretty clear that it's the sort of the right time in the hobby where things are going crazy in general. Uh, at least for guys like Ben Baller and stuff, you have people, like, in, like, the hype beast community, sneakerheads, streetwear people, just younger people, like, on Instagram or who, you know, they get hype because the people are sort of you know, it, it goes beyond just regular sports fans because you have these artists and these influencers who are making cards. So, uh, so that's kind of why I think this storm has happened. Now, what I want to focus more on is like, what what is the future of Project Twenty Twenty? Uh, is it a good thing for the hobby? Is it a bad thing for the hobby? Um, me personally, I'm not a twenty a Project 2020 guy. Uh, I'm just not that into it. I don't have any Project 2020 cards. Um, I also don't dislike it. Uh, it's not for me, but, you know, it is for other people. Uh, so what I, I just want to kind of project what I think uh, is going to happen with Project, 20, uh, Project 2020 and then sort of what it means for not just the hobby, but like baseball in general. Uh, so in terms of where I personally think it's going, um, well, one thing I noticed, uh, is that the, the most recent drop, uh, for Project 2020, uh, which was, uh, some, someone or others, Trout, and then a Bob Gibson, uh, and the price, the, the print runs on these cards, so that means the, the number of cards ordered by people on Top's website, I think it was like, 36,000 for the Trout, uh, and like 25,000 for the Gibson. And that's pretty high, comparatively speaking. Uh, and I think that's the start of a trend. Uh, I could be wrong, but I think this is what's happening. This, this blistering hype and these unreal prices are being realized right now. We're like peak craze, and everybody wants to get in on it now. And what that means is uh, everybody's clicking buy on tops. And so because the hype is growing, so everybody's sort of scrambling to get in on it. Uh, and that results in sort of ballooning print runs on these cards. Um, so in a nutshell, uh, I think basically where this thing is headed um, is I think for most of the cards... In Project 2020, I think the hype is going to die significantly, um, and a lot of these cards, the ran ones that are selling for like 200 bucks, um, you know, 300 bucks, that just all of them are kind of just exploding. I think most of the cards are going to at least somewhat uh, come back down to earth, uh, but I th I do think a few of the key cards are going to remain. Uh, they're going to keep a a lot of uh, collector and like investor interest, right? So like certain key cards, I think the Ermsey Trout, uh, the Ben Baller Ichiro, uh, a few of these I think will sort of maintain their status. Uh, but in general, I think sort of um. 
everybody trying to get in on this. So the, the print numbers balloon because that's how the system works. They just print how many people order, right? So there's no limit, technically speaking. So it could be as low or as high as however many people buy it, right? So I think you're going to see increasing print numbers on these cards across the board for a while uh, before people push it, pump the brakes and say, whoa, okay, uh, wait a minute. Now all these cards are being way more printed than they were before. Um, and you're going to have a lot of, I mean, at, <laughs> come on, a Ben Baller Ichiro for $2,000, it's like, Holding it and not flipping it, is it's almost not an option, right? I mean, you're talking about you could get a low-grade 33 Gaudi Lou Gehrig or this Ben Baller Ichiro for like $2,500. So my point is you got to flip it, right? People, and so, I mean, I'm already seeing so many of these cards on eBay. Uh, in fact, it's it's getting a little irritating because if I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in me personally where I'm at is I'm, I'm getting more into vintage right now uh, with things being what they are. So I, I'm looking for some of these players that have 2020 cards, and it, I got to admit I'm, I'm a little bit irritated when I you know, put in the card, the player whose vintage cards I want to find, and I got to scroll through all these Project 2020 listings. So my point is that people are just dumping them onto eBay, uh, trying to flip, and I think the numbers are growing. So I think all of that means in the future that the it is things are going to kind of come back down to earth. Um, again, I, I don't know for sure, uh, but we'll see what happens. Your guess is as good as mine. Um, but yeah, with the exception of, I think the earlier cards before the hype exploded, you know, these cards that have lower print runs, uh, the very earliest cards in Project 2020, I think those might, uh, maintain, uh, their status, uh, in the hobby among collectors and, you know, quote unquote investors, uh, and things like that. So, um, but yeah, that's where I'm at on it. Um, in terms of like, uh... Uh, how like what what about the influence of this like on the hobby and in baseball in general? Um, it may sound crazy, but I th I honestly think that this is good uh, for baseball, at least baseball in general. Um, if not the hobby, you know, you have a uh, uh, again like a guy like Ben Baller. He's got a million and a half followers on Instagram. Uh, he's a jeweler for celebrities, uh, and he's out there saying, if you have this Project 2020 card, like the one of one or whatever, I'm going to pay you $8,000 cash money. Uh, he made a, you know, he, he put out, it was either a tweet or he put it on Instagram, basically. If you have this card of this baseball player, I'm willing to pay this amount of money, you know. So I think, like, in general, uh, you know, we all know that baseball needs uh, a younger audience, and it needs more young people uh, getting into it. Uh, right now, it's kind of considered the sort of the baby boomer or maybe, like, also a little bit Gen X sport. Uh, older people like it, and young people don't like baseball, and I think to a certain extent that's true, and so... I, I don't know. I think if you've got a, so many young people use Instagram and social media and they follow guys like Ben Baller. And I think if if these guys that are kind of like they, there's crossover between these other communities with that are full of young people like hype beast community, those p who follow celebrities and things like that. And you have this kind of like, you know, quote unquote influencer saying I'm paying big bucks for this card of this baseball player. Um, I do. I think that's good for baseball. Uh, maybe you disagree, but the, for me, this is one of the things that I think is kind of exciting about Project 2020. Even though I don't personally, I'm not really into it. I'm I'm taking a hard pass on it uh, overall, and I was from the beginning. But I, anyway, uh, that's kind of my thoughts on it. Um, you know, it's crazy times, surreal times. We'll see what happens. Um, and you know who knows if I if I see a Project Twenty Twenty card that I, that really sort of sings to me, uh, I'll try to pick it up maybe for twenty bucks on the Topps website. So um, that's where I'm at on Project Twenty Twenty. Uh, so I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you these new pickups I got. 
uh, thanks for bearing with me uh, on my little, uh, you know, soapbox or whatever. All right, here we go. Okay, so first up, I've got this 1993 Bowman Mariano Rivera. And this is uh, this is Mo's second year card, um, and of course we all know his rookie card, uh, where he's like leaning against a wall in khaki pants, and it's like a glamour shot. Um, I personally think this is a much much nicer looking card. Uh, obviously, he's in a Yankee uniform. Uh, it's a nicer picture. Uh, one of the things that I think, uh, you know, in the current sort of crazy atmosphere, uh, one thing I've noticed is that uh, we could be seeing sort of an increase in interest in second year cards uh, like this one. Trout kind of sets the trends in the modern market and Mike Trout's second year cards, third year cards, his early cards are starting to sort of creep up, if not explode. And I think that's honestly a really positive development. Uh, so speaking of Trout, here's a nice Trout Bowman Mini. I think this is 2014. Yeah, 2014 Bowman Mini. Um, found this at a card shop for real cheap. Um, but yeah, so as I was saying, you know, I think that if... if it Interest in second-year cards uh, starts to increase. Um, I think that's a great thing, you know. I think there's just maybe a little too much emphasis on, like, rookie card, rookie card. It's got to be a rookie card. Got to get his rookie card, you know. There are other nice cards of these players out there, so I think uh, that would be great um, if those other cards can kind of grow, so... Uh, here's a nice little pickup. I got this Panini Prism, uh, Ronald Acuna Jr., uh, the Pajamas, uh, second year card. Um, so here's, uh, I like Prism. I just, I really like the look of them, even though they don't have the logos. Um, and speaking of which, um, well, this isn't Prism, but it's still Panini. This one I actually pulled, so this next card... I uh, I pulled myself uh, the other day. I went to my LCS and I was looking for 2020 Bowman, and they didn't have any. Surprise, surprise! So I bought myself some consolation packs just to rip for fun, and lo and behold, this was in one of them. Uh, so here's a 2019 uh, Donruss Optic. Fernando Tatis Jr. Red Refractor, and this is numbered 60 of 60. Awesome card, uh, quite a consolation prize for not finding any 2020 Bowman. I'll take uh, Fernando Tatis over Jason Dominguez any day, <laughs> at least for now. Awesome card. Even sweeter because it, it was an actual hit that I pulled. Oh, and so here's another right to my point. So here's a 2012 uh, Mike Trout, Tops Mike Trout. Um, this is his Series 2. The 2012 Update Trout, uh, the All-Star Game logo one, has really taken off. Uh, but this is another one to watch here, just his regular 2012 Tops um, Mike Trout second year card. Again, I really like the development of, like, second-year cards or, you know, a player that's not necessarily the player's rookie kind of taking off. So, um, okay, and then I got this. Uh, don't forget about Shohei Otani, everyone. I got this uh, 2018 National Baseball Card Day Otani rookie. I think you can get these for a couple bucks. Otani... His prices, although Otani's pricey in general, um, well, at least his autos are, but Otani hasn't really, uh, Otani hasn't really, um, uh, his prices haven't really been swept up in all the craziness. I think Otani is a really good buy right now. Um, oh yeah, so here's another really nice pajamas card. Uh, I got this. Uh, 2011 season ticket Mike Trout rookie. 
uh, the from playoff contenders 2011, uh, the official pajamas rookie <laughs> of Mike Trout. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a 2011 card. It's a Mike Trout rookie. Um, I was able to snag this from a seller here in Japan for about $30. Um, there, you probably wouldn't be able to find them for that cheap, but, uh, look into getting one of these. I think, uh, it's definitely being slept on, so. All right, and then finally, I got a really special Ichiro for you guys. Uh, speaking of second year cards, uh, this is a 1994 second year Ichiro, uh, Japanese card when he played for the Oryx Blue Wave in Japan. This is a really special card that I also got from a Japanese seller here. Um, one of the benefits sometimes of being in Japan as opposed to the U.S., you can kind of once in a while come across true gems like this card. So if you've never seen this card before, um, that's not surprising. Uh, this was a Colby regional issue. Uh, in 94, uh, and it was only released in Hokkaido in northern Japan. So regional issue in Japan, second year Ichiro, very scarce, uh, definitely going to get this card uh, slabbed up at some point. Um, just really a beauty that uh, I got for a really nice price, and I'm really happy. As an Ichiro collector, I mean, this is huge for me, so... Hope you enjoyed that. All right, guys. Well, thanks for uh, checking out my video as always. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.